Hello hackers! Welcome to another video in Pwn College. Today we're wrapping up the race conditions uh, module with the signals and re-entrancy video. Um, think back to actually throughout this course where you've interacted with signals in one way or another, um, but especially through to the fundamentals lecture about the process life cycle, where I discussed how signals work, how um, they might be uh, uh, sent to a, a process, etc. If you recall, um, back in that lecture, I talked about how a signal is basically a, a message in some sense, a, a, a message with an oomph from one process to another. A process will send a signal, can send a signal to another process by using the kill uh, system call. Kill system call takes two arguments, the recipient process ID and the signal to send. The signal to send is basically a numerical constant um, that encodes a bunch, one of uh, a bunch of different types of signals and different types of signals have different um, effects and different semantic um, um, intents, basically. For example, um, I can send a, uh, 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 without an, if, if you use the kill command in on your shell, the, the kill utility, um, and you don't specify a signal to kill, it'll kill what is called, it'll send what is called a sig term signal to the recipient process. The default action of this signal is to kill the process. Um, on the other hand, if you send a sig stop, the um, only action, it's impossible to change this action, will be to stop that process and then you can continue it by sending a sig cont, right? Um, there's a bunch of different signals. Let me show you real quick one signal, sig alarm. Um, if we, um, write alarm me.c and we have a main program. You can call alarm to set a timeout in seconds after which an alarm signal will uh, trigger um, and, be, and, and be sent to your uh, program. So if we make an alarm and then we loop forever, All right, let's run it. After one second, we get the printing alarm clock, the printout alarm clock, and the program terminates. That is the default action, for example, of the signal alarm clock. All right, um, and there's a bunch of different signals. These aren't, uh, this isn't the exhausted list, the exhaustive list. You can uh, run kill-l to print out all of the signals that, um, you might uh, uh, have to deal with throughout your computer science career. Um, all right, and of course, they're well documented on Google and probably many other places. Um, all right, let's uh, roll forward. So these are signals, these are send signals. Now, I keep saying the default action of a signal, such as signal alarm, for example, is to print alarm clock. Well, it turns out you can change these actions you can register a function that will be run when you receive a signal. You can register a function for every signal except for sig kill and sig stop. Those two signals are impossible to um, um, uh, capture. Um, all right, so you register a signal handler. What happens when you trigger it is that the um, execution, your process execution will immediately pause and your signal handler will be invoked. Let's let's take a look at what this might look like. I wrote us an alarm that C that basically it now registers a signal handler for my alarm, and it says uh, um, it'll print alarm in all caps instead of alarm clock and exit with their code forty two. Let's uh, compile that, run it one, two, boom. And there we go, exit code 42. So we can uh, successfully capture almost any signal using, uh, by registering a handler, uh, there are two ways to do it. The easy way is to use the signal command uh, function. Um, signal is uh, a function that just takes a 
a signal number and a function, and it'll run that function with one argument, which will be the signal number that's received. Why does the signal number get into the function? Well, in case you want to have one function that handles a bunch of different signals, so you can figure out what signal is handling. All right. Um, there's a, a more complicated way to register signal handlers with SIG action. You can read the man page if you're interested. Uh, it gives you a, a lot more control about how the signal will end up being handled. and lets you just say, okay, actually just ignore certain signals. All right. Um, so why is this relevant? Well, this is relevant because you can actually send any signal to any process that has the same real user ID as your process, right? So a sender process with a real user ID of X can send any signal to a uh, recipient process with a real user ID of X. Even if that effective user ID is zero, even for set UID programs, right? Which is really cool. This means that there could be a set UID program running somewhere. And at any point that you more or less control you can cause that program to suddenly and unexpectedly to it, because it gets no warning that a signal is coming. You can let it uh, make that program suddenly divert control flow to the signal handler, right? And if you recall in the race condition module, uh, wrong module, sorry, or uh, where did it go? There it is. In the race condition uh, lecture, we had something like this. We had a critical section that we wanted uh, not to have competition between two threads in. Uh, basically, our assumption was that from the beginning of this lock to the unlock, all this code would run. And on uh, a second thread, this program is the uh, multi-threaded, wouldn't interrupt and clobber these results. Well, that works for threading, but a signal received here would still redirect control flow from the middle of this critical section to the signal handler. So it it's, uh, can be pretty tricky handling signals. All right, so what can we do with this power to send signals to any process? Well, we can uh, trigger bugs if the process is, uh, if the program is not programmed carefully. Um, consider, uh, that's weird, hold on. I updated this slide, that should, there we go, I renamed that signal handler to signal handler. Um, all right, consider this program. Um, the program's super simple, it runs a loop, and what it does is it uh, will check if the global number is zero, if it is, it'll increment it, and then it'll decrement it. The global number will always be zero at the end of this decrement, uh, supposedly, and if it's not zero, we'll print it out. All right, so we should never see anything being printed. But before it, uh, the program runs into this loop, it'll register a signal handler. And that signal handler for SIG user one, uh, this is user defined signal one, it's specifically there to um, give a little, uh, give the opportunity for a um, developer to implement uh, program specific signal semantics. SIG user one and SIG user two is another one like that. All right, anyways, so, uh, but realistically it's not different. This could have, might as well be uh, SIG sec V, the signal that your uh, program receives when it's sec false. Yes, you can catch that signal and do clever things with it, um, such as debug your shell code when it crashes. All right, um, SIG seg, uh, what am I, um, so anyways, when the program receives SIG user one, no matter where it's executing, control flow will suddenly and rudely be redirected to the signal handler and none will be set to zero. So the uh, uh, obvious question is, what happens if the signal is received right at this decrement pointer? All right, let's take a look. So I created this in signal.c. Here we are. Uh, looks like it makes sense, right? Same thing that we discussed. Let's compile. All right, uh, so we run it. And of course, it doesn't print anything. Num is zero. All right, how do we attack this? Well, we attack this, obviously, by sending a signal, sig user one, 
to this program and we send it a lot and eventually we will hit uh, the scenario where this ru this runs to increment num and this before this guy runs to decrement it num is reset to zero this decrements num and turns it from zero to negative one all right let's give that a try if we run this and then in another window we uh, get the uh, ID the process ID of this program and we just send a signal boom nothing happened why because we didn't win the race maybe uh, it got received on a, one of the on a different instruction than the one that actually uh, then between the increment and the decrement there's probably like three assembly instructions that run very fast we can of course keep trying manually that's not gonna likely yield success or we can of course as we did in other races just loop this so i'm going to put a sleep five so i can switch over to the other window and then we'll count to five and as this thing runs we will start uh seeing the number get messed up all right here we go three four five and our attack is running as you can see we keep resetting the number to zero then it gets decremented and sometimes you see negative two because that loop happens to run twice before the next signal is received right um actually if we kill this and if we put a sleep one, we we uh, do this, and then actually uh, let's do a sleep of 0 0.1. We sleep a tenth of a second between every signal. It'll give it time to decrement that counter some more. So let's see. Here we go. Now it's going to be hitting us with our signal. There we go. See, so in a tenth of a second, we managed to decrement it 50,000 times. Now, why does this happen? Um, of course... The signal hits uh, after between this line and this line, or you know that set of instructions. This set of instructions, uh, num gets reset to zero. This gets decremented. Now num is negative one. In the next loop around, this will not get run because num is not e zero. This will get run. Num becomes negative two, and so on and so on. It keeps shrinking uh, until the next signal hits and resets it back to zero. All right. So. That was an abuse of signal handlers. There's no threading in this program, but there's still a race, which is pretty cool. Um, and in real world code, this stuff happens a lot. Vulnerabilities uh, arising from incorrect signal handlers are, uh, they used to be much more common than they are today, but they're still definitely not unheard of. All right, one other thing to mention, right? Um, these uh, problems with signals are strongly connected to a concept called reentrancy, right? A reentrant function is basically a function that will operate properly even when it is operate, uh, interrupted with an instance of itself. So uh, consider the swap function. The swap function takes uh, two arguments, uh, two pointers, and it'll swap the, the values at those pointers. And it does that using uh, a temporary, temporary global variable that it um, will uh, use for one of those values. Then it'll write value two to, to uh, over value one, then it'll write temp over value two, standard swap. We have a call swap function that actually does swap between one and a two, right? So at the end of this, x should be two, y should be one. But that uh, function is called by main, but it's also uh, registered as a signal handler. Now, what happens here if right before line five, we receive a sig user one? Well, what'll happen is the a new in instance of call swap will run 
right? Because that's the signal handler. It'll call a new instance of swap. Swap is already running. It just got interrupted. The new instance of swap will run and overwrite temp, right? And in this toy program, that's not a big deal. But in general, reentrancy is a big problem or uh, reentrancy bugs are, are a very real thing. Um, and keep in mind, if your program calls a non-reentrant function, or if your function calls a non-reentrant function, then the caller function is also non-reentrant. Because then if you call the caller while the uh, callee is executing, it'll re-enter the callee. In fact, that's exactly what happens in this scenario. Um, Reentrancy as a concept is, is uh, interesting um, and not a very obvious concept. I'd recommend uh, giving the Wikipedia article uh, a, a shot and related uh, um, references that it will link you to. Um, so this brings us to this question of safe signal processes, uh, practices, and I misspoke practices. That's embarrassing. One sec, let me fix that. All right, safe signal practices. Um, the biggest thing in signals, don't call non-reentrant functions in your signal handlers, right? Uh, why? Well, because as we saw, your handler might in, have interrupted previous iterations of those non-reentrant functions mid-execution or another signal that's received might interrupt your signal handler's non-reentrant invocation of those functions mid-execution. Or, depending on the settings, we talked about the more complex SIG action uh, function to, uh, to modify actions taken as a result uh, of a signal. Using this, you can um, set a signal handler to be able to be interrupted by the same signal that triggered it in the first place. By default, you can only handle one instance of a given signal at a time. So if you handle a uh, sec fault while you receive a sec fault, um, that second sec fault, well, I don't know about sec fault. I'm not sure how that would work. But if you, but if you receive a sig user one while you're handling a sig user one, by default, the second one will be ignored. But if you uh, register things carefully with sig action, the second one will not be ignored. A second iteration of your uh, a second instance of your signal handle will be launched. And if it's not re-entrant, you're in for a bad time. Uh, one note, actually, unexpectedly, malloc and free are not re-entrant. This makes sense if you think about it. Malloc and free both touch a global value or a global structure that is the um, allocation cache. That uh, modification is not re-entrant if... Um, PT malloc is messing with that cache while, uh, and then it gets interrupted while it's messing with that cache, that stuff can happen. Um, if you're interested on what library functions in libc are re-entered, there's a whole manual page. If you man signal-safety, you can read all about safe signal practices um, and implications of using common functions and what functions are safe to use. All right, hopefully uh, we've learned a lot about signals and I'm looking forward to see you explore this concept through the practice problems. Good luck.